Well, we continue today with 2 Samuel. Uh, in chapter 1, David had found out about the death of Saul and Jonathan and had a beautiful lament that drew together his men and something that would be sung by the daughters of Israel. So it was a wonderful redirecting, a redirecting of honest grief that enabled people to think and to speak and to sing in accord with God's way of viewing things. Now, the time then comes for action. What now? See, Saul is gone. Well, the people of Judah uh, make David king over the tribe of Judah. Now, this really began with the Lord. Of course, we've been watching this story unfold in 1 Samuel, but here in 2 Samuel 2, David inquires of the Lord. He says, shall I go up into any of the cities of Judah? And the answer comes back, yes, go up and go to Hebron. And that's where he goes. And the men of Judah came to Hebron and they anointed David king over the house of, of Judah. Okay, but Judah is only one tribe in all of Israel. So what, what about the rest? What about the rest of uh, the people of Israel? Well, David certainly tried to connect with them. For instance, he sent out a blessing uh, to the people of Jabesh Gilead because of the way they had treated the remains of Saul and with much courage had rescued those from a Philistine temple. So he said, may you be blessed by the Lord because you showed this loyalty to Saul, your Lord, and buried him. So this is a an opportunity to draw everyone together, not to try and be the critic of Saul. That was not David's way, but instead to show that he honored Saul. But there were those who wanted to go ahead with the reign of Saul in some way. And one of them was Abner, who was related uh, to Saul and, uh, he took Ishbosheth, the son of Saul, and brought him to a particular place in order to make him king over a portion of Israel. So this is the Benjaminite solution, is that they will stay uh, with the reign of Saul in some way and move on to his son Ishbosheth. But the house of Judah did not go along with that. They they followed David. Well, this ended up leading to war, war between Abner and Joab. Now, Abner uh, was the son of Ner, uh, and he was with the servants of Ishbosheth, the son of Saul. But Joab was the son of Zeruiah, who was the sister of David, and he's there with the servants of David. And so they go out and meet, and the first thing we see is almost like a, a, a ceremonial drama of death as 12 men from Benjamin with, uh, and serving Ishbosheth meet 12 servants of, of David, and they each caught his opponent by the, by the head and thrust his sword in its, his opponent's side so they fell down together. It's a horrible thing that's taken place as these men just, just die there. And then there's the broader warfare that takes place as the sons of Zeruiah, uh, Joab, Abishai, and Asahel uh, lead the, the men of Judah in uh, fighting against Abner and his forces. Now, in the process of this, Asahel is killed by Abner. That's, that's a devastating thing. But then finally comes this word, this word from Abner. Here's what he says. Shall the sword devour forever? Do you not know that the end will be better? How long will it be before you tell your people to turn from the pursuit of their brothers? And Joab answers in, in a beautiful way, as God lives, if you had not spoken, surely the men would not have given up the pursuit of their brothers 
until the morning. So Joab blew, blows the trumpet, and this particular battle is over. But uh, we live in a world full of war, and what we need is a word of peace. You know, Abner gave a word of peace, but many centuries later, the word of shalom came into this world. The, the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and he has become our peace. Let us pray. Father, thank you for Jesus, who alone can bring peace in the fullest measure, not just for a little time, but forever. We're grateful in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you, friends. Have a great day.